sound from the 2018 CDR. That's the stock pipe. We, we reflashed the computer and put that, reinstalled it. It is in right now. We're running it for about 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes, and then we're going to turn it off and then we're going to do all the mods. I have the acrobatic exhaust right here, ready to slap on. We have the pair valve kit right here. We're gonna slap that on. And we're also gonna try and take out the intake flapper. So we'll see how this goes. Um, we'll be back uh, pretty shortly after we do some mods and we'll show you how it sounds right after that with the new pipe and the pair mod and the intake flapper gone. All right guys, so so far we've taken off the gas tank and I'm gonna show you what we're doing past that. So the gas tank was just a quick connect. It's right there. So it was just a quick connect on the bottom. Okay. Just a quick connect on the bottom and two connectors. Okay, I put some rags down to keep it nice and cool. This harness comes off as a hole, so just unplug everything, take the computer back out, fold it down. You gotta take off this one quick connect uh, fuel line, which goes from the upper to the lower. It, it looks like there's injectors up top and below. I'm not 100% sure you know, what's going on there yet, but we're gonna take off the top of the air box right now, right here. It takes all these little black screws. So we're gonna do that with you guys on the cam. And we'll see what we can get. All right. Nice and careful. Take it slow. Don't want to hurt anything. So we're looking for the intake flapper, and also we have to take the air box out to get to the pair system. So, either way, this air box has to come out. I am, like I said, looking for the intake flapper though, because I'd like to remove it. I'm not 100% sure where it is on this bike. Don't look like a Japanese industrial standard, just regular uh, Phillips. Japanese industrial standard, if you don't know, is actually a type of Phillips, so the type of flathead. They're specific for Japanese, uh, basically hardware from back in the day. They're on old Hondas a lot, and actually, they're still used on uh, you know certain Kawasaki's and Yamahas, etc. If you if you'll notice. If you look at the head of the bolt, you'll have a dot on it, an indented dot. That means Japanese industrial standard. And it actually takes a certain type of tool. So what we have so far, it looks like two, four, six, eight. Eight of these little screws. Takes up the, the top. And we'll put those aside. We're going to gently pry that up. So there are injectors up top. Those are four injectors up top. Make sure to put that to the side and be very careful with it. Your air cleaner element is under here. It also has screws holding it on. I'm just thinking about keeping that there. I'm not going to remove it unless I absolutely have to. So as you can see, Two of the velocity stacks down the center are actually higher than the ends. This is our air cleaner element. I'm going to probably, I'm hoping I don't have to remove it. There is a couple screws holding in. It looks like there's three screws clamping down the bottom, two screws on the top holding it in place. Um, trying to see what's holding this on without having to do any real removal of anything too extreme. So it looks like we are going to have to take out the air cleaner and the velocity stacks. So let's do that first. That's probably the bolts that are holding it to the throttle plate itself. So 
So we're going to remove those. I'm not replacing the air filter. I believe the OEM air filters are as good as it gets for what you need on your bikes. So again, I don't rec recommend swapping them. Canon filters have been proven to not give you any extra performance when it's actually installed on the bike. And that's coming from a dyno run. So I really wouldn't waste your money on it. They do a ton of R&D for the air filters on motorcycles, especially Honda. So I would just keep it stock. It's going to be your best bet. So to get to the middle, middle bolt here, you actually have to remove this velocity stack first. So we're going to loosen all the screws for these stacks. Make sure to be really firm when you're unscrewing these. Push down really well so you don't strip the screw. So these come out as a double unit, which is really cool actually. And they do hold it down the throttle plate, which I've seen many times before. So we're going to set these to the side and be very careful with them. One last one right here, you can see this clamp that's actually holding down the rest of the air filter, as you can see. So it goes this way. Okay, pops right out. Nice and easy. Here's our intake ports. We're looking for that intake flapper valve. So. I don't see any valve yet, but we'll get to that. So you're going to want to pry these down as you're pulling it out so you don't rip the glue on the other side. This has glue all the way around. Okay. So there is a, a line on the other side here, as you can see. So if it's not coming up, that's reason one why. So I can see part of our intake duct did fall out. Just going to push that back in, keep it nice and secure, and we'll slide this hose right off. Just comes right off. And then as you can see, there's another hose right here. also just slide that one right off and there you go there's the bottom of the intake okay
All right. Also, I don't know if you guys noticed, there's also this hose right here. So we're going to find out exactly where that one goes to and what it, whether or not it goes to the pair system or not. Do you have to remove this inner liner? And I think, if I'm looking at this correctly, there's only so many ways to do that. I think we're gonna have to take off this inner gap. Yeah, we are. I can actually see that it comes through over here. Unless I can fold it up and check out. Yeah, it doesn't look like that's going to be a possibility. Okay, so, better view on that. So we just pulled back the cover. There is glue on both sides. That's why it was sticky. Like when trying to pull it off, I mean. So this is down. So I'm going to put this right here for it. Okay. And we're going to find out exactly how we're going to do this mod. So, Looks like it's got a diaphragm right here. So what the kit came with... This is what the kit came with. So it came with your two plates for the block offs. And then it came with one rubber nipple. Came with some instructions as well. Kind of interesting. Hmm. So, obviously, if you can see in here, that hose goes to there, which you won't have that plate, you'll have a just straight plate, so you won't worry about that vacuum line. Same goes for over here, you won't have that vacuum line. So, what this nipple will probably go for, since obviously this goes to the air box itself, will be for where this was on the air box. So, if you come back over to the bottom of the plenum, or, sorry, the bottom of the air box, right? This is for that center. This is for the side. I think it's a safe bet to say we can plug this with our nice rubber nipple here, which honestly seems a little too long, in my opinion, but who am I, I guess? Yeah, so that's too long, so I'm going to trim it. But let's make sure that we have everything good before we do that. So we come back here. Okay. Can you guys see that well? I hope so. So I'm going to take these off. These are two 5 sixteenths or 8 millimeter. Depending on if you want to use American or not. It's totally up to you. These are driven plates. Let's see what this says. So if we're reading the instructions, right? This is their instructions. Make sure ignition key is turned off, obviously. Place motorcycle on lift, rear center, side stand, obviously. Locate the final destination of the new block off plates, got that. Careful remove any fairings if needed, okay? Careful remove fuel tank and air box, done. Careful remove any parts instructions the other end plates, then remove them. So that's pretty much just this, this little cover right here. Using blue Loctite, install the new block off plates using the OEM hardware and the OEM ceiling O-rings if present, which we do not have. Look at OEM air hose leading to the air box from the OEM, which we found was this. This hose right here on the right, found was this one. So again, even the instructions say what I was suggesting before. Using supplied cap, remove hose and plug air box. Carefully replace air box, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so where we saw on the bottom of the air box that I said we were going to be installing that this, this nipple is where we will. We're just gonna cut it so that it's nice and tight. 
So first and foremost, we got to take off the old plates and then install these. So get started on that. So we're going to be removing this entire system, which means unplugging that. And you'll leave this unplugged because you'll be removing this entire unit. So there is, as I can see, a black connector holding it on there. So I'm going to remove that. That's on the wire harness. And then we're going to be removing the two hoses, which again, these should just slip right off. So there's the pair system, okay? That's a solenoid, which is basically like a diaphragm. It ejects, opens, and closes. And we're going to keep all the hardware on this, just so if we ever do sell the bike, we have all the stock parts, okay? Keep that handy. Alright, so let's get to the next part. If I can get you guys a better view here. Certainly will. Alright, here we go. So you can see our two plates. It looks so ready to leave the motorcycle. So let's get our 8 millimeter. I got a quarter inch socket and a open end box wrench. I like to start these with the box wrench. Of course, this is always going to be personal preference and uh, location. So if you can't, you can't. Yeah, these are definitely tight. So be careful when removing them. Don't want to just force it. If they're like really, really tight, and you know you're gonna strip the bolt or something just take it easy move a little bit at a time so these are very tight I gotta say I'm trying to keep this little dressing out of our way so let's see if the quarter inch ratchet will be a bit better Remember, small movements go a long way because this does have Loctite on them. So you definitely don't want to get too crazy on them. They're not going to be easy to remove as Loctite itself is made so that it's not easy to remove. Some people I know just um, they'll take the they will take the uh, the like some rubber nipples, vacuum nipples, and just plug the caps. You know, I don't think that's a good way of doing it. I think if you're gonna do it, might as well do it right. When you're already in here, you're already you know, right here, why not just do the whole thing? There's no point in getting this far and just doing it half fast. So this is going to be the longest process, in my opinion, as far as like a single job goes, or a single part of the project. We'll be removing these bolts. They're not short, and again, they do have Loctite on them. I'm sure of it, so not going to be a very easy thing to remove. But it looks like so far we haven't had to remove the fairings. Um, I'll tell you right away, it's not going to be easy to get this piece back in, especially this like edge. But I'm going to do the best I can to get it all back exactly the way it was. Because again, I want this to stay as stock as possible, or as original as possible, if you will. Okay, so let's see the bolt. See that's one bolt. See it does have some like type of Loctite on it. 
It's their proprietary lock tent, I'm sure. Some kind of orange goop. It's turned to a hard plastic. So, there's the bolt. It's pretty long. Let's take out the other three. I remember small movements, but a long way. Wow. Crazy how hard that thing was in there. It's pretty hot, I gotta say. So you can see it's actually still stuck in there. See this stuff? Okay guys, so make sure those are all nice and snug down. Take your plate. The orientation is going to be this little divot to the back. Okay, and they're gonna go like that. So the symbol will be in the back left corner of each. So let's get our bolts on here. Let's get a little bit of blue Loctite. It is blue, by the way. It just has a red bottle. It's funny like that. And we're just gonna put a little bit on the threads. Just a little. Don't get too crazy. Trust me, a little goes a long way. Okay. Start these by hand, of course. And then finish them off with the socket wrench. It's nice and hard here at the end. That's what she said. Wow, that's what she said myself. Now you know I'm getting bored. Make sure that they're down nice and snug. Do one at a time as far as like get it as low as, as it's going to the plate, like the surface plate, and then don't snug it until you get the other one. Just about the same distance and then Snug them both about the same so that they're even, so the plate's going on even as well. Certainly don't want it to be all cockeyed. And the left plate's going to be a little bit more difficult, in my opinion, to get in than the right plate. Just because the orientation. Looks like it's a little bit more tucked under there. So since I already kind of got the right one pretty low, I'm snugging the left one first. It 
does have a stopping point there. Don't get too crazy. There we go. Check the other one again, nice and snug. That plate is done, nice and clean. So you can see, nice and clean. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So we'll take the plate, groove towards the back, put two bolts inside, take our trusty lock tight, and just put a very little bit on the threads, okay? That's actually more than I usually use, but like, you get my point, just a little bit, okay? Again, start them with your fingers so you don't cross thread them. You know they're in there nice and even. They're started. Okay. Snug them up like the other. Get it pretty much all the way to the base. Let's get some light in here. And it's not like you really have to center these plates when you put the bolts, when you get the bolts started, they will center themselves. Watch out for that breather nipple, it does get in the way quite a bit, but you certainly don't want to hurt it. Like I said in the beginning, small movements go a long way. I got the other one pretty close to the surface, so I'm doing this one all the way snug. There we go, and then I'm going to do this one snug. Snug, snug. Okay, so that's the main source of, or the main objective here is to complete that part. And before I'm done, since we have a dangling hose here, or I mean a dangling connector, and also we have this dangling wire here, I'm going to take both and I'm going to try and zip tie them. Probably. To this like pickup sensor over here just zip time lightly here because again we, we don't want this to just be floating around um, this should be connected to something somewhere but I don't actually see anything it was connected to so we will get it connected right now with a zip tie somewhere close by could even do it to the fan right here and just zip tie those together but you don't want it to just be dangling around.
Alright, so that's nice and zip tied down. So now we just gotta cut those zip ties. Make sure the fan spins freely. I'm sure you saw us doing that quite a few times, just making sure. Always safe practice. Okay, and from here, we just have to backtrack what we did. So, I will be right back with you guys when we get this all buttoned up, and we will be starting the bike up and seeing how she runs, making sure that it all runs well. If it does, we'll be taking off the exhaust and then doing the acrobatic today as well. Alright guys, welcome back. We got the computer on, the intake on, which by the way that bottom intake is a doozy. So right now, while we have everything apart, I decided I'm going to do the servo motor, which is this bad boy right here, this large one. It's got a plug that plugs into the side, comes up out of the top. It's a 8mm hex bolt. Check this bad boy out. And again, I've, I've never done this before, so I have no idea how this thing wants to come out. But we're going to figure it out together. Okay, so there's nothing else to remove here. There's just some cables that look like they're kind of locked up in here. Okay, it comes off a stud. Looks like the cables can come up and out. I just got to kind of finagle them if you will. Let's get a light. Okay, so interesting. Um, it's very similar to a throttle plate. Um, it actually has the two wires hook in just like a throttle plate. So I'm wondering if we can remove it from this bad boy down here. So we can take off those two eights, take the cables out right there, and then slide them all the way through. Or at least ideally that's what I'm thinking. So let's try and take out those eight millimeters right there. And then uh, we'll see if we can get it out. a bolt and a nut. Nice and small but easy to remove. And there is one on the other side as well. So just loosen it and then just take the nut off the bottom. This is what our plate looks like. And again, keep everything together just so if you ever do go to sell the bike, it'll be a lot easier. So just like a throttle, we can see, let's see if I can get you guys in here. We can see there's lock screws, which we're gonna loosen, and then we can take the cables out. And then hopefully, we can take the entire unit out. Alright, let's see what I can do with you guys here. So they look like tens. So let me go grab a ten and we'll see if I can get these out. Now let's see if they're loose. Definitely not loose. Not a whole lot of room to work with in here, but imagine we don't need a whole lot of room. So I can get a light in here. Okay, so this one's loosening. Cool. Okay, so we got one loose. Let's 
see if we can get the other one without destroying anything. So it looks like something's in the way. And I'm not talking about the wall here. There we go. We broke it loose. Now we just gotta see if we can just turn it a little bit more. And if so, we'll have it loose. There we go. So a little hard to finagle, but not impossible. All right. It almost looks like actually there's a plate with a bolt right here, or with a with a lock. You can push that down, take the whole plate off, and then remove the whole thing, and then it'd be a lot easier to take off. Um, hypothetically, looks like there's a lock on both sides. Yeah, because otherwise it's not going to be easy to remove either way. Let's see if we can push those down. Well, I'll admit, they don't make it easy. And again, you know, this is my first time taking a servo motor out of an exhaust. So, you know, I could be doing this completely wrong from what's recommended. And this is just spinning. But at least... I can get to that back plate. So it did spin, which, you know, of course you don't want a motor to spin when it's not running, but it didn't give me a whole lot of options as far as how to remove this. So here's the locking plate. Okay. Let's see if we can remove this entire assembly. Okay, it looks like we can. It just has a spring on a pressure plate. Not a big deal. Get that right back installed once we get the exhaust off. There's the spring. Here's the plate. It's got to be locked in on one of those, the uh, spring, which if you can see, it looks like the springs was in this little groove right here so we'll get it back in there when we're done no doubt about it let's fish these through okay so now we have the cables that are up here but they're loose from down here so we're going to take this bolt out and take this plate out and hypothetically we should be able to get to what we need that's a five millimeter just like almost all the other ones on here all right let's see if we can get you guys a good view of what's going on here Oh wow, look at that. That was way easier than what I was doing before. Trying to pull it out of the top. So without trying to scratch it in here, I'm going to guide these through. So 
I really don't want to scratch the swing on them. And again, these are kind of bulky, so... Not really ideal things to have to pull through a small area, but it is what it is. There we go. That's the whole unit. Okay, that's the servo motor. Goes down to where we had it locked into the bottom plate. And this We're gonna have to remove as well. So since I want this out, we're gonna end up taking this cable off of this end. So we took this cable out because I want this plate still, of course. This goes in the bottom. All right? You're getting the plate back in now. So it looks like you never removed anything. And this, you know, if you get the server to lead on the ECU flash, you're going to be doing this with or without a new exhaust. It's just going to make your exhaust, your stock one, a bit louder, which is nice because at least then you'll be heard when you're going around the town because our pipes don't really open up until about 6,500 RPM. So now, my recommendation, take this cable and reinstall it. Okay. Just so, again, it stays as one unit. You don't just want a bunch of loose parts everywhere. That's, that's not good practice. All right, so there we go. We got the servo motor removed with almost no dings at all. Gonna have to clean this all up, of course. Cool. All right, now let's remove the exhaust and uh, we'll put on the Acroprovic we got. All right, guys, welcome back. We are going to be taking off the exhaust now. This looks like it's an H. That's correct. Got a dent in the back. There you go. There's the nut. There's the bolt. And it's got a bolt on the clamp. Make sure not to put your fiberglass when you're loosening this. The new Aqua product does come with a new clamp as well. But when you're removing this, if it does have an exhaust gas, be careful, you do not want to hurt it. So just start wiggling it on out. Very gently, up and down. swing arm at all. This thing doesn't make it easy to get out though, I'll tell you. And it does have an exhaust gasket. So let's verify that the new one doesn't need one. Of course, it harms that in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Getting out the acrobic pipe. And I removed the installation instructions as well. Just 
just to verify whether or not we'd need that gasket. So let's see. So it says first to remove the servo, which we already did. Don't like how tight that was coming out, so be careful when you're doing that. You might need to pull this off slightly so you get an extra little bit of room. So it looks like nothing's saying anything about needing the gasket. I do find that slightly strange, but let's take a look. Let's see how she fits on there first. And if she fits on there nice and easy. Then we're good to go. If not, we're gonna need to take the exhaust gasket out of the old pipe and install it onto this new pipe, which honestly that's kind of what I think is gonna happen. Oh yeah, no way. No, no gasket needed. You wouldn't be able to put one on if you, even if you could. So these clamps, usually you'll have an exhaust gasket in here. This thing is so tight on there, there's no way. So, let's see if I can zoom you guys out so you can see me a little bit better. Okay. Nice clamp, it's a T45 or a T40 maybe. Let's go get that ready. So it looks like it is a T45. Okay. Loosen that up a bit. I don't want it to fall out though. Okay. We'll put that on the clip itself, pointing down, just like the other one was. So we don't have any interference with the fiberglass. Shouldn't have to remove it. Cool. It's got a nice ring on there. So we'll just slide this in here. So doing our best to not to hit the swing on. Up and down movement is all you really need. Slide in your old mount hole. You have to pick that up a little bit, it seems. There we go. Once you get the back and that on, just hand tighten that. You should be able to tighten the rest by holding the back net and spinning this. Alright, we've got that nice and tight. And it says explicitly in the instructions to only hand tighten the clamp bolt. So down here, we're just going to hand tighten that bad boy with a 3 8 ratchet. 
but I want it to stay in place right where it is. So I'll hold the top. Just gotta get it started. It's a high quality clamp actually. Everything about this Acroprovic system is nice, very nice quality. And like I said, for the price, it's on the cheap end, because it is a slip-on, but it doesn't look like it's on the cheap end when you receive it. I'm not going too tight there. Seems like that'll be just fine. Especially since it says hand tight, but I don't have a T20, T45 handheld wrench, you know, so I would wager that once it's nice and snug, you don't really need to go any past that. Alright, let's take a look and see how she actually looks. And we'll go from there. Oh, wow. That's really nice and tidy compared to what we had. That's amazing. Okay. So I'll back the bike out and we'll take a look and turn it on. Alright guys, so we got the pair mod deleted. We have the new exhaust put on and we have the ECU flashed. So what I say is let's take a listen to see what she sounds like, and I'll give you a look over so you can see what the new pipe looks like. So, that's the new pipe, way better looking than before. We have the fender eliminator, so we cleaned up the rear end. Can't see the pair system, of course, but it is what it is. And uh, the ECU flash we have on, but I won't know what, how it feels until I do a ride, which I'll also do a review on that. So it's on. very satisfied with uh, all the mods I've done so far and uh, the pieces that we have right here we have the servo we have the pair system that's what it looks like all together we have the new plates on there no check engine light awesome so I got the computer flash done at Dano's mod uh, Dano's performance you can find him online you just mail your computer he mods it and then sends it right back to you I got it back in two days so I sent it on the third Wednesday I got it back on Friday so, or no, I sent it on Thursday, got it back on Saturday. Yeah, and the exhaust I got from Revzilla, I got it in two days as well. I had to get it sent to Arizona, like I said, but I picked it up there, slapped it on. Primo, let me tell you. Um, so I'll do a ride, and I'll let you guys know how that goes, and uh, I'll be back with that review. Thanks.